Hello everybody, Anarchist Goss here, also no sketching creations, and it's, it's been a while, hasn't it? Been more busy playing Deltarune Chapter 2 and all that, but now we're back. We are back with Spyro Reignited Trilogy. If you remember last time, we beat the first game, we taught that nasty Nork his lesson. You know, the lesson that do not retaliate if our people insult you because then they will come and destroy your entire lineage or something like that. Anyways, today we're going to continue with our adventure. Excuse me, controls. We're going to continue with our adventure by playing the second game, Ripto's Rage. Now, as I believe I elaborated before during the first game, while I had no prior experience with the first game, like barely anything, I know the second and third games very well. I played the hell out of them. In fact, I still have my original PS1 copies, and I can play them whenever. Still, it's nice to be able to have this as well, with a nice HD take. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. Ripto's Rage. It's been a while since I picked up this controller. In the world of dragons. I feel like the original game's title cards felt a bit more special. Like, the Twitch Vibes effect is cool, but still. Is this rain ever gonna stop? I've forgotten what the sun looks like. We should go on vacation. Somewhere warm. Somewhere sunny. I've had enough of that, Spyro. Dragon Shores, yeah! I haven't been there since we kicked Nasty Nork's butt. But I'm still sunny sick. It, Sparks? You up for a vacation at the beach? <laughs> Last one there's a Nork! <laughs> But the, the change where this cutscene takes place, by the way. Back in the original game, it took place like in a, in a generic landscape, but now it's in Stone Hill. Is it working, Professor? Almost. Just a <coughs> few more adjustments to these orbs, and maybe this isn't such a good idea. Bringing a dragon here could just make Ripto more angry. Calm down, Hunter, and stop fidgeting. But you saw the Professor's book. They have claws like this and teeth like this. And they can spit fire like this. I spit particles. They're much more dangerous than Ripto. That's exactly the point. A dragon is our only chance of stopping Ripto, and you know it. It's working. It's working. I've got a dragon. Huh? <gasps> Whoa! Rough landing. Hi, which way's the beach? Hmm. Huh? Hey, stop staring. Haven't you guys ever seen a dragon before? You're a dragon? You got a problem with that pussy cat? Well, that's bad. Well, well. Someone forgot to invite me to the party. Were you trying to keep something from me? A dragon? You brought a dragon to Avalar? I hate dragons! Yeah! I... Crush! Kill it! Kill it! He's going to clowns here. Oh, what a nice candied apple. You imbecile! You ate my scepter! I'll deal with you later! Who was that jerk? That was Ripto, and we have to get rid of him. He's causing all sorts of trouble around here, but I haven't got time to explain. Here, take this magic guide to Avalar. It'll help you begin to understand our worlds. Right now, I have to follow Ripto and see what he's up to. I'll meet you in Summer Forest, okay? Hey, wait a minute! How do we get ourselves into these messes, pal? And thus, the premise for our adventure was set. We gotta stop that big meanie Ripto. And here we are in the land of Wow, Clever. Also, if you somehow notice a small cut during the cutscene there, because I accidentally skipped the cutscene while I was adjusting something, I accidentally had the recording window blocked off. Hey, hey Sparks. Yeah, it's been a bit, hasn't it? Anyways, so yes. So here we are with our shades, like I enabled them back at the end of the last game. Yeah, Spyro wanted to go on vacation, 
but you end up getting dragged into the world of Avalar, because these folks need help defeating that bad guy, Ripto, and everyone has had a nice redesign, or questionable redesign, which I'll get talk talk about that as we get to the redesigns. The first thing I want to talk about, though, is that guidebook that Allura gave us. That guidebook is one of the more dis disappointing things about Reignited Trilogy, because you see, back in the original Spyro 2, that guidebook became your pause menu. Whenever you paused, it showed the guidebook at your pause menu, which was really cute. However, though, Toys for Bobby just stuck us with its generic pause menu here. Ignore the cursor over there. Toys for Bobby just stuck us with its generic pause menu format over all three games, which is a little bit d disappointing, unfortunately, but what, what can you do, really? <clears throat> like a budgetary, budget, budgetary concern. So anyways... Uh, so let's get going and talk about things we do. So here we start in Glimmer. Also, apparently, like European, European or something versions of the original game, instead of being instead of being subtitled Ripto's Rage, it was subtitled Gateway to Glimmer. It's like, I mean, yeah, the game does start with Spyro taking a gateway to Glimmer, but like Glimmer is just the first level. It's not like it's like archingly important for the entire game. So that's weird. Anyways, let's talk to this mouse fellow. Hi, Spyro! Welcome to Glimmer! Unfortunately for us, a mob of lizards just showed up and started stealing all of our gems! Can you stop them? Sure thing, bud. Also a nice thing between the first and second game, now there's more character dialogue than just the dragon saying, Thank you for releasing me. There's more character dialogue with the whole dialogue system and a lot of voices. It's, it's quite nice, though. I can't, I can't help but have this guy's original voice embedded in my brain because I, I heard it used in... A YouTube, a YouTube poop music music video. He's a white EMB for him running in the 90s. Hey, hey, Spyro, welcome to Glimmer. Have you seen that video? Props to you. You see a bunch of litters here. Those ugly mugs in the background. You see them? They got a redesign. I really, do, I really don't like how these guys look now in Reignited Trilogy. I've seen them before. The screenshot. Their faces are far too realistic. They were very cartoony in the original. <clears throat> It's like, feed yourself. Edit in what their face used to look like. <coughs> it does not look so different. What, like, Toy Strip Bob, why? Why did you do this? Anyways, we'll help Pogo. Up here are our first gems. And again, I think as I said this before, in the first game, the gem sound effect is just not as punchy in, in Reignited Trilogy. I think the original sound effect better. And now we have gem baskets, unlike the weird, the weird chests and metal boxes the first game had. Now we just have baskets. This is what I'm used to. I like these more. We ram or flame those to open them, just like the chests in the first game. Remember settings, sound. Yeah, I'm just gonna You know what? I'm gonna switch that to original because I like the original. I played that original game. Get a sweet, sweet nostalgia. Anyways, first enemies, what do we do? But, chunk, ram right through them. Where do you think you're going? Get out of here. <clears throat> anyway, something you may notice now is different is that, well, in the first game, all the monsters drop gems when you beat them, because Nasty Nork turned treasure into monsters. This time, the monsters are actually real, and now they drop a little spirity thing. We'll get into what that is later. Now, just. Drop on through collecting gems. Here's our first fodder. It's a ladybug. Twilight would hate you. Okay, then. Here's our first big enemy. It also looks significantly less cartoony. Like, past self. Uh, future self. Added that in, too. It's like, how they changed you, you dino guys? They're, they're only in this first level, so. I still feel slightly insecure with, how, with the range of the big enemy's attacks. Also. These giant gems are so shiny now. I think in the original game, it was like gradients making them look shiny, but now it's like proper cube mapping. Look at that. That's so pretty. I love that. <coughs> I do. I would totally have that as a paperweight at my desk, and I do actually. Except mine is more transparent. You gotta just swap me. Anyways, down there is progress. I'm gonna finish scouring this first area first. See down there we have a nice screen map. I think I, I don't remember talking about it in the first game. Like, I think maps started map the map in the lower corner of the screen is an option starting like the second or third game. 
but if we beat Night Trilogy, all three games will have it, which is nice. So you can see where I am on the level. You know, you can turn it off if you'd like to be more surprised by the level load out, but I know everything here. So I'll just leave it on, so you can see what's going on. Again, nice tenor, yellow gem. Do the gem values, do the gem color values change between games? I'm not entirely sure. The nice thing between this and Pool 2 is that I don't get Steam notifications showing up on the screen all the time, because OBS changed something. This little crevasse down here. Okay, so, something about this, this crevice only fe always felt weird to me in the original game. I don't know what, though. Anyways, chunk, chomp, choink. Goodbye to you. Here's <laughs> here. There's a little sparkle in that gateway. You see that? Not the monster sparkles. That one right there, the gold sparkle. Wait, is that you might ask? It's Zoe, the fairy. Now, can we skip her? Yep, yeah, I can't skip her. Because the game, normally the game tries to very much barricade you to, into this encounter because. Hi, Spyro. I'm a friend of Alora's, and she asked me to help you out. Whenever you find me, I'll remember your progress. Like this. It's a checkpoint tutorial. That zap means that if you get into trouble, I'll return you to this place. See you around. So, yeah, regularly in your spurs around the world, you find Zoe here. And whenever you walk by, she will zap you and save your progress. Unlike in the first game, where your progress is only saved every time you rescued a dragon. Now you just regular checkpoints in your space throughout the world, usually in like doorways and stuff like this. That's nice. And now we have now we have a specific fairy. It's not just some random fairy we don't get to know the name of. So this tutorial right there. Nice gem mining cavern. There are mining gems in here. That's what this, that's what Glimmer is all about. Mining gems. Look at this place. This place is also beautiful now. That clown. It's nice. It's nice to not have to worry about picking up gems these guys drop anymore. Anyways, hello there, fellow. We gem cutters are a bit too short to climb these ladders, and it looks like you are too. After you learn to climb, come back to Glimmer to see me. But even if, if anyway, even if I know the technique though, does that change how short I am? No, because Spyro never gets any bigger. I, I complained about this in the first game. Anyways, yes, ladders are a new thing, but we cannot climb them yet. So you look at them, you can see that they're, they're flattened rods. In the original game, they're all just flat textures, but now they're actually a model. Excuse me, camera. <laughs> now, in the original game, there's an exploit here where you can jump on top of this gem and use that to, to get up there. You see some sort of gate up there with a number on it. However, in the Ignited Trilogy, they made this gem taller so you can no longer climb on top of it. More taller and slopey. That's a bit unfortunate. This one too. It's consistent, but you know, a bit sad. You can't do that anymore. I like standing on these gems. The nice polygons they were. So that up there. That is something we'll have to worry about later. We'll, but we'll learn what they are within this this session of this level. Get all the gem, the gem, the gems. Try not to my nose bother me too much. I'm still slightly sick, as I said. Not as sick as before, but still slightly sick. You know, a bit something to watch out there for. Be aware of you and your friggin' hammer. Get out of here. So we've killed nine monsters so far. This guy will be our tenth over here. Alright then. Get over with. You're out. Ten monsters. Give yeah, we'll a look around, make sure I haven't missed anything. Again, I'm gonna try to avoid using Sparks' gem locator ability. It should be easier to do that here, since I know I know these games like the back of my hand. I played them so much. I mean, Spyro was my childhood game, basically. I know the, the second and third game like the back of my hand. I did not. I, how did you just? Oh, just a little divot there. It's Spyro climb. That's interesting. Accurate collision. <clears throat> right, and here's everyone's favorite character from the second game. Ugh. Ah, you must be the dragon everyone's talking about. Well, dragon or not, I'm afraid there is a small fee to open the bridge. It will cost you a hundred of your gems to cross. Money bags, the money grubbing bear. He will appear now and then across the world to gate your progress. And you need to give him your gems in order to move forward. Yes, it's nice they gave the gems a bit more use <clears throat> in the f sequel games following the first, but you know. Does anyone that you've here like money bags? I don't know, but for a while I like the concept of carrying a bag of gems, so 
like a long time ago when I was a kid, I had this wool hat, and I had a, a sack full of those plastic gold coins, so I, I just filled the, the wool hat with the coins, and I put a drawing of a gem on the front, it was cool, anyways. No. You'll have to pay up sooner or later, it's the only way across. I have to look after my... <clears throat> Avalar's financial well-being, you know. You know, spitefully, he's not wrong, because you, you, you will be required to pay him all the time, so... Back again, eh? And with plenty of treasure, I see. Would you like me to open the bridge? I won't even increase the price. How kind of you, money bags. Now here, take your money, you dirty bear. Thank you, Mr. Dragon. That Spyro, was it? You can now use the bridge whenever you want, free of charge. I hope we meet again. When you have even more, Jim. Has Spyro mentioned his name to anyone yet? I don't remember. Anyways, when the bridge opens. Still here? Why don't you help the gem cutters? And they'll show you the way to Summer Forest. Yeah. Also, a nice thing this game has now. NPC response. If you attack NPCs, they will respond to your assaults upon them. Nice little interaction. The first game don't I have that because there weren't many NPCs. <coughs> Anyways, to get a good oh, look hi, around, hi Zoe. press the action button. Try using action to look around this cave. Well, thanks for making me lose that that dino. Because yeah, I use your thing look around. I used it earlier to look at that thing in the ceiling. Ooh, look, there's a giant gem right here. That might be important later. All right then. Gotta grade this clown first then, because the other one ran away. Gems. There's just stuff up here on this ledge right here. We can't quite get it yet, but maybe we can. There, hello there. And you're gone. <coughs> so that guy right there is the end of the level. I'll I'll put him on delay for a bit. And instead, come out to this nice back courtyard. This building, I don't want to mean those buildings for it. You can store the gems there, the mine. There's, gotta clean up some more clowns. Clown cleanup service. Gotta take all your extra gems as payment for the extermination fee. Now, this right here, this, well, like that guy, will, I'll let this guy explain it actually. Great! The superfly power up is active, and you can restart our gem lamps. Flame all the lamps quickly, and the big gem lamp will light. The power-up will give you enough magic to fly for a short time. Indeed. So, our goal here, walk through the pyramids to trigger the superfly power-up, light the gem lamps with your flame, and light all the lamps quickly. Difficulty, one star. So we have introduction of interlevel missions, and also power-up uh, gates. This is, why we were, this, was, this, this is why we were collecting the souls from the enemies. You can see there we have 13. There will be gates like these interspersed throughout the levels, and you need a certain number of enemies defeated to power them. Walk through will give you a special ability. I will show that in a second. They did change how these look. I kind of like how they look in the original game more, because like these are like more like traditional pyramids. Like you see, it's stereotypical in every game. I kind of like how their their original design more, but what, what, what can you do? And it was attack you. But right now you don't respond, but it's Moneybags does. Moneybags. Wonder Bags does have the response. Anyways. You have a hooligan. <clears throat> I think yeah, the other the other we, we saw the other power up gate back in the cave. I think that one's also powered, but we can't access it. So finish collecting all the gems just sitting out in the open here. Over here we have a whirlwind. This is some of these in the first game. There's a fair number actually. Here, they're still, it still serves the same purpose. They lift you up like a little magic elevator. Oh, hello, I miss you. Don't remember the magic elevator take you higher. These gem lamps. In, in the original game, the gems were a lot smaller. They were the same size as the gems you collect. Now they're like big, like the size of four watermelons or something. Quite large. Can I get over here? Because there, there, there is an improvement on Spyro's motion. Since the first game, because you remember when you glided, if you hit the triangle button, I'm still gonna use the PlayStation terminology. If you glided and hit the triangle button, Spyro would instantly just fall down to the ground. But now, 
He does a little flutter at the end of its jump. And by golly god, that gives you so much extra access to the world. It's amazing. You, you don't know what you've missed until it's gone. It's nice to have that back now. Anyways, conspicuous holes in the ground. I wonder where these could be for. Getting along with the gems, though. I mean, how many? There are 400, so... It's 92 left. Okay, anything else out here? <coughs> I missed it on the steps here. Steps of the mausoleum, that's not what it's called. As I want to say the word mausoleum, this is boarded up for some reason. This will lead to a restricted mine area. Okay. So then, let's do this next. In the minute here, so we gotta light all these gem lamps. We gotta do it just like this. So, this is Superfly Power Up. It allows us to fly like this. For as long as that meter on the right side of the screen has juice. It's our timer. It's nice. And... Boosh. All the jam lamps power up the metal thing. And sparkles. Thanks for helping me light the lamp, Spyro. A fairy gave me this orb. But I like gems better. You take it instead. I feel like the animation of the, the, the lamps power up the center thing looks slightly cooler than the original. <clears throat> You're just like, this knowledge speaking. Anyways, here is our main collectible of the game. Orbs. Also, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very disappointed in Toys for Bob here, because in the original game, the, jet, the orb will play an animation where it bounces towards you. You can skip it any time by pressing the start button, but still, I miss that bouncing animation. Now it just appears in front of you. I've seen that way as well. I miss the old animation, it was, it was more fun. Because we're collecting orbs in this game. In the original game, we are just collecting dragons and eggs, but now we're collecting orbs. Orbs would be our main collectible. Was I say this for no reason then? Hello. Wherever that was hit away. Oh, I hit the texture. I came here to get this gem. So this guy here has an orb. I think this is new. They had to do Reignite Trilogy. Now NPCs that give orbs have a little notification over their head. These little lizards have eaten my entire crop of gems. I've tried hitting them with rocks, but they're too fast for me. You can try using one of my rocks. If you have any questions, just ask me. Mm -hmm. Hit the little lizards with rocks and talk to Bouncer for additional hints. I don't need your hints, game. I'm a pro. So, spitting rocks. That's a new thing, isn't it? So, you can press B to spit straight, or you can press triangle. I'm mixing the analogy here. To aim, and... A little higher. Fire! I know, that's the wrong button. Sorry. It's circle. The fire button. Center properly. Poop. You're done for. Nice <coughs> shooting. Follow me to the next lizard. So somehow Spyro has better aim with it, and timing with his mouth and bounce it does have with his hands. How does that work? I know where you're going, dude. I beat you there. I beat you there, dude. I know where you're going. Oh, you, you super jumped. You cheated. You can spit <coughs> pretty far, Spyro. See if you can spit all the way to the lizard. Will do, buddy. Now that guy's farther away. I think you gotta do a little bit of a height compensation. I don't know how much you have to compensate. So your spines on the guy, spiral spines. No, that was too much compensation. Yeah, I spit these cocoa, there's co these cocoa pebbles at them. Cocoa puffs, but I just say pebbles. That's a different cereal. So, uh, how about right there? That's good. <clears throat> Going over here. Look at this clown. Can't flame him though. To hit that lizard up high, you'll have to aim. Press the action button to aim, then press the attack button to spit. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know all these things game. I know you gotta cater to the to the people who are actually new, but I know I know how this works. Boosh. And for the next one, we go back through here. Because the next one, don't miss the doorway. The next one, or well, should be there. It's not gonna gear. Do they have to use gear here? <laughs> okay, he doesn't spawn in yet. You, you can talk to him for hints, but I don't need it. So, 
aim upwards and boosh. Eat, eat your cereal. Eat your chocolatey cereal, you little lizards. And the last one. There's two more. And the next one is here, I believe. Can I jump with this gem? Yeah, this one's. This gem is still low enough to stand on. I think the next one's on that ledge right there. <clears throat> now come on, Bouncer. Waiting for you. You're holding us back, dude. Are you just waiting for us back there? You've. Your AI is stuck waiting for me. Yeah, is it he got stuck because I went too fa fast for him. You're too slow. Oh, come on, bounce that game positions. There he is. <coughs> Let's stand on this gem and do it. Got you used to the joystick camera controls again. Gonna admit this at last use them. The last one is up there. Like, how the hell did he even get up there? Did he just burrow through the building, or did he crawl like a lizard? Alright. Away with- no. Oh, he moved. Do I missed! How dare you dodge the barrel! Wait for you to move this time. Goodbye! Yay! You've saved my crop of gems from the lizards! Here, take this orb! Some girl with wings dropped it here yesterday. Yeah, that implies that the fairies aren't a regular occurrence around here for some reason. And we got another orb. How lovely. Yeah, two orbs. It's not all of them, though. You can have as many rocks as you like. This guy isn't even a supply of rocks in his hard hat. Boosh. There's not a point, but he does that. Right then. So let's make our way back towards the end of the level. I, you know, there's one, there's, I think there's one more thing we can try, and we'll go talk to the guy at the end. So I think we can use this power up for an exploit. If I remember correctly, in the original game, don't cutting trigger me. Okay, try to fly up here. That would be. The Almost didn't make it. But you're not supposed to do that, but you can do that. It's just like a shortcut get up here. There's more gems. However, there's still more gems up in that alcove. And we can't complete the task in here without the ladder ability anyway, so we'll be we'll be back here. We'll be back for this place. Yeah, this game actually has you can you return to older levels to get things you couldn't get before. It's a nice little bit of use, anyways. So last things last, we'll talk to this guy after I collect all of his money. Spyro, thanks for helping us fight off the lizards. Please take this talisman of glimmer as a sign of our gratitude. Now here's a new thing we'll be getting throughout the game: talismans. It's kind of like your completion stamp for each level. This magic portal next to me will take you to Summer Forest, one of the home worlds of Avalar. Indeed. Yeah, talismans. Now we're collecting talismans to kind of your completion. Uh, excuse if you hear dog in the background. So talismans are our completion thing for completing each level. We'll get one for most of the levels anyways. And they'll be important later. You see, we don't have all the gems, we're missing one orb. We'll be back for those later. 84%. Anyways, though. I'll call it off right there. Next time, we'll take the portal to Summer Forest. So until then, my name is Anakos Gauss, also known as Sketching Creations, and I will see you then. Thanks for watching. Let's see here. So.